right, well, I'm just gonna wait for another minute or two to get started. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. My name is Erin Cherwadi from the CNS Career Center, and I'm here to present about resumes. I would love for this to be as interactive as possible, so feel free to unmute yourself if you have questions or put comments in the chat or questions that you have because I wanna make sure you're getting the most out of this as you can. A few things just to start. One, this is being recorded, and two, just wanna show you some of an overview of the career services that we have here at the CNS Career Center. Let's get through these quickly. Try to do my best. Okay, um, on our Career Center website, which is just cns.umass.edu forward slash careers, we have a lot of great resources, including all of this information I'm going to share with you about on resumes, cover letters, internships, networking. Um, the Big Interview is a fantastic resource for mock interviews if you have interview practice that you want to do before a job or internship interview. We also have our internship and research database where you can see what previous students and your classmates have done for summer or research internships and um, get some connections too if you're interested in trying those out. Our, our uh, career development handbook is also linked on that website. This is a great resource to, normally we would hand it out in person in normal in-person days. Also a couple of things that has even just some links to the top employers for every major we have within CNS, just as a tiny subset, but as you're starting to look for internships and jobs, it can be a great resource that way to see who has hired our students previously. Um, quite often after you attend these workshops, I know a lot of you would like to redo your websites or sorry, redo your resumes, make some updates. Want to remind you that our career peer advisors have drop in hours four days a week. So they are trained on resumes and cover letters. And it's a great opportunity just to you know, have a resume check or ask some questions about how to strengthen your resume. So our goal within the CNS Career Center and what we are here to work on your resume with is the whole idea is that we want to connect your skills and your interests to find the perfect or you know, the best career for you. So there's an intersection of what you love, what you're good at, and what pays well, obviously, because you wanna be able to support your life. So this is our goal here. Um, that link at the bottom, umass.edu forward slash careers forward slash planning is a great way when you're looking for career exploration. So why are you here for a resume review? One of the things we really encourage you to do is get what we call experiential learning, which is literally learning through experience. And that can be internships, that can be research, that can be full-time jobs. But we really encourage you while you are here at UMass to get some internship or research experience if possible. This can also be volunteering. This can also be shadowing, if, you know, depending on the industry that you're in, or even just a summer job in the industry. 65% of UMass students do some sort of internships or research with faculty before graduation. Now, let me say though, that is during normal times. We are not in normal times as all of you who are living in the dorms or off campus know right now, right? This is what we are calling the year of COVID-19. So we get, and so do employers, so do recruiters, so do researchers. This is not the year that most of you probably had the internship or research of your dreams. We would love it if you did, but we know that many of you were not able to do that because you were under, you know, under quarantine, lockdown, staying safe at home. So the key part for that and what we're going to, what I'm going to show you on your resumes today is to focus on the skills you look, the skills you have, and the experiences that you did that will help you show that you improved yourself or you, you know, that that you didn't sit at home all day playing video games, watching Netflix. We know you did some of that and that's okay. You need to be able to relax. But the important part is to show what you have done to stay on top of your knowledge and skills. And the one thing I wanna say is it's not too late. So if you didn't do anything, if you weren't able to, you know, if you don't have anything to show on your resume, one, I'm gonna show you how you can feature your, uh, your lab skills and your coursework. But I wanna bring up something that um, UMass has partnered with LinkedIn Learning these are free online courses that can lead to like a, it's a 
it's not a necessarily a UMass certificate, but it is something to show that you completed a program. So it's just you, there's the link up on top. If you just Google UMass LinkedIn Learning too, you'll be able to find this. And if you wanna teach yourself skills, there are hundreds of skills and courses that you can take. So for example, I typed in Python, if you're interested in teaching yourself coding. There are 5,000 different courses you can take that involve Python, ranging from 20 minute overviews to that first one on top is 21 hours long to actually teach yourself Python developing. This can be a great way to make yourself more marketable, especially if you have extra time right now because you are stuck in a dorm room, stuck off campus. Um, if you have that extra time, obviously your coursework needs to come first, but this is a great resource. And it's not just coding, there are business skills. You can teach yourself social media marketing, small business marketing. There are a lot of great skills. So take advantage of this LinkedIn learning to help increase those skills on your resume. So that being said, again, I'm gonna help you feature some of those skills you may have um, from your coursework on your resume. Here's a sample resume. I'm gonna go show you a bunch of different resumes from different majors. On our website, I'm gonna put this in the chat just one second. I'm gonna show you on our website, we have resume and cover letter guides as well as links to sample resumes. So let me put these in there. So the sample resumes on our website are just nine sample resumes from different majors within CNS. We have over 20 majors within CNS. So your major may not be represented in those samples and that's okay. I actually pick and choose sample resume, sample sections from each resume based on who I'm talking to. So you could be a psychology major and I may say, let's take this out of the psychology resume and this one out of the BMB resume. So just keep that in mind. There's no one perfect resume format. The important part is to be clear, concise, and really quickly and easily communicate your skills and accomplishments to a recruiter. So this is, happens to be a sample animal science resume. What the key things I wanna point out is you see how this is a really simple Word document. It can be Google Docs, it can be LaTeX if you're a math major. The important part is not to have a lot of different formatting, colors, fancy graphics. Resume scanners, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute, the um, applicant tracking systems, cannot always read resumes that have the graphics, the charts, the, the fancy things in there. So you really do wanna keep it simple and easy to read for employers. You wanna have your education up on top. Quite often, I will see resumes that come in, they may use a template from their parents or an, you know, someone else they got online that has the education on the bottom and your experience on top. As a college student, your experience, the most important experience you have is your education, your coursework within CNS and within your major. So your education actually goes up on top. Once you've been out of school 10 years or longer, for example, if I was submitting a resume, my experience goes up on top because my college and grad school were a long time ago. So education goes on top. You actually want to write out the title of your degree. So Bachelor of Science in in uh, veterinary animal science or Bachelor of Arts in Psychology. I will give you, there are some examples I put in the chat. Um, relevant courses is a great way, and I'll show you a little, this a little bit more detail later. Um, your relevant courses is a great way to show that you've learned the knowledge, you have not had a chance to apply that yet. So definitely pick your um, some relevant courses. You do not want every course you've ever taken, just those higher level courses that will make you marketable. Anything that may not be taken outside of your, that might be taken unusually for someone in your major, or those advanced classes, just four to six of them. Um, this example actually has more than that, but if they want your transcript, they will get your whole transcript from you. And then you're gonna have your experience and software skills, campus activities. I'm gonna show you how to do lab skills as well. The next one I wanna show you really quickly is just a math major. Um, again, these are all just sample resumes. Um, you can see the education up on top. If your GPA is over 3.0, we recommend you put your GPA on there. And you also know that you want to have your graduation date. You don't need to have when you started. So if you are a sophomore, for example, you don't need to say September 2019 to present because you res recruiters only have 30 to 60 seconds to skim through your resume. If they're looking at a stack of resumes, you don't want them to waste time doing the math in their heads to say, okay, if this person started in 2019, they are a sophomore, junior. It's more important to them to know what, when you're graduating. So they know if you're not graduating till May, 2022, you're looking for an internship right now. And if you're graduating in May of 2021, then you are looking for a full-time job, most likely, um, unless you're going to grad school, but those are different. You're gonna talk about that in your cover letter. So really important to make sure your graduation date is at the end um, and put the month, because if you just put expected graduation 2021, 
you could be a December grad, so they may not know that you're available in March, in May. Okay, so when you are building your resume, what is it that employers want? When we meet with employers and say, what's important for, them, for you to show, right? They want to see your problem-solving skills, your leadership, your communication, those lab or software skills. So these are this is just an example, and you, it's really important to show that you have it. If you don't show that you have those skills, they will assume you don't. So don't assume that just because you're a biology major, they'll know you have lab skills, that they'll know you have teamwork skills working in group projects. And you don't want to, we actually moved away from having a section of soft skills. So instead of having a section that says team oriented, organized, pull that whole soft skill section out. You can talk about those in your cover letter, but it's much more effective if you show that you have a strong work ethic within each of your bullets. And I'll show you that in a few minutes. But anything here, like your problem solving skills, you can talk about from your intro bio lab, or you can talk about in your time working at the dining hall, working with multiple people and multitasking. When you are writing a resume too, often you want to update your resume for different industries. So it's always a good idea to have a master resume of everything you've done, including what you did in high school, what you did up in summer 2016, if you go back that far. Um, but there may be different, depending on if you are applying for a tutoring position or a research lab position, your resume may be targeted a little bit different because you're gonna focus on those different skills and accomplishments that you have. And I'll talk about that in a few minutes. But by having a master resume that could be two to three to page, two to three pages long, you're not going to submit that resume because ideally your resume will be one page, but that'll be something that's easy to pick and choose when you are doing a new targeted resume. And as I said at the beginning, if you have questions, please feel free to jump in into the chat or verbally too. Um, Usually, as I mentioned, you want one page. I'm going to touch briefly later on the difference between a resume and a CV, but 90% of the time as a college student, you are going to want a one-page resume. If you are applying to grad school or you're applying to a really research-heavy position and you have extensive research experience, you may have a two-page resume. But ideally, when we talk to recruiters who come on campus for career fairs or recruit our students through handshake appointments, positions, it's not that they don't want a two-page resume, it's that, if night, it's that much of the time, if they have a stack of resumes they're going through and they're trying to get through it quickly, they just don't go to your second page. So you run the risk that everything on the second page just isn't going to be um, seen. So if it's important enough to have it on your resume, we can work with you and show you how to prioritize it to make sure it's on one page. Make sure you double check for spelling, grammar. Sometimes there are two spellings of a word, right? So you may have spelled a word correctly, but not for that sentence, like the word there, T-H-E-I-R or E-I-R versus T-H-E-R-E. -R -E. It means different things best based on how it's spelling. So don't just count on spell checker. Check the grammar, have someone else take a second look at it and make sure it fits. We have also moved away from including things like hobbies and interests on your resume. Your resume just needs to be your skills, your accomplishments, and the work that you have done. So don't include your life history. If by the time you are a junior, our usual recommendation is that you should not be including high school anymore. Um, for first and second year students, yes, include your high school, include your high school activities. Um, this is a little different this year, again, because of COVID. We know that even our juniors were not have lost a year of experience in many cases. So this is a little different. Again, we can talk one-on-one -on -one if you'd like, but um, generally by junior year, just include what you've done in college, but we make an exception, you can go back and do what you have in high school, um, list your high school if you want to network with someone there or you want to show local connection and you're applying to summer positions at that place. And make sure you do not stretch the truth, be honest. Do not put that you are fluent in Spanish if you have not had Spanish for four years since your freshman year of high school. And if someone started a conversation with you, you couldn't answer them. So put whether you as basic fluencies, conversational, uh, absolutely fluent. Really quick example here. Um, I had a student a few years ago who had that she was conversational Spanish on her resume. It was something she never took off from high school. She had not had Spanish since high school, but she had it on there. She walked into an interview, had nothing to do with her Spanish fluency, it just happened to be on her resume. And the interviewer had just gotten back from Costa Rica and started speaking to her in Spanish. 
she made two, she figured out like two of the words out of everything he asked her. So clearly she, she was not offered the job. And he basically gave feedback later that he, if she misrepresented her span, like something on her resume, how did he know everything else wasn't stretched too? So just keep in mind, make sure if you are taking a class this semester, make sure you put that it is in progress, um, but just always be honest in what you're doing. Uh, so Chris, your question, if you are a grad student with 20 year work history, because this we can kind of talk about this offline if you want. Because you are currently a grad student, yes, I would put your education up on top because that is something that you are going, you are a grad student now. If you had finished grad school, so um, a long time ago, then no, your, your experience would go up on top. But really, what is going to be most relevant to the employer? So if you think your experience, if you had 20 years of experience in the field, then that might be more relevant, but you're shaking your head no. So I think that because you are, are a grad student, if you're trying to get a job in that industry, yes, your master's or PhD program should go up on the top. Yes, okay. Um, and no, the one page rule would not apply to you. So you could have a two to three page, two, ideally um, two pages front and back would be the most, but if you have a CV or you're applying to academia, then yes, you could do even longer. Okay, and then references. References are very important to have. However, you don't want to actually put them on your resume and submit them with every single job. Reason for that is because if you are submitting your resume to 15 different places, you're basically giving personal contact information out along with that resume, every resume you're handing out. Have your references available, have people who are willing to be your references, but employers will not call references unless you are a finalist. So they may request them and absolutely submit them if they do, but if they don't ask for references at the start, please do not submit references right away, okay? And then when you are writing a resume, you may have noticed in those samples that I had previously, you want to make sure you use bullets in your resume and not full paragraphs. Now, this is a little tricky because if you are using LinkedIn, LinkedIn, you do want to use those paragraphs. That is more of a personal conversational area. We can, we can talk about that separately. We have some LinkedIn guides on our website too. But when they are reading your resume, as I mentioned earlier, they take 30 seconds to skim a resume, right? You want those science action words to be on the left side of the page. So my background is in psychology and adult learning theory shows that every time they have to change, you know, change lines, change fonts from bold to italics to everything, you lose about a quarter of a second. Which means if you are, so it's easier if they read left to right, they may not get to the right side of the page all the time. They may be skimming, right? So the first thing you see is the left side of the page. Test yourself next time you're reading something quickly. So this is the, these two things are the exact same thing, but it's much easier and quicker to read that top section than at the bottom, right? So those key things, you demonstrated responsibility, you assisted students, you provided out of class help, you followed confidentiality standards, right? These are all really important things, and it's really quicker and easier to read if you use bullets rather than the uh, paragraph form. Um, another thing we suggest you do is always start with an action verb. That handbook that I mentioned on our website, and actually if you go to the sample resumes and just scroll up because that, the sample resumes in the chat just take you to a section in our career handbook. Quite often when I'm looking at resumes, I see that people just pulled off the job description, which says duties included or responsible for, you know, responsible for administering subject questionnaires. We're all responsible for things, right? But you have probably all, and I have been, all been in group, sec group sections or group study sessions where someone was responsible for their section of it and didn't do it, right? And everyone else had to pull, had to pull, take care of their slack. So instead of saying duties included, go straight to saying what you did. So if your duties included administering subject questionnaires, say that you did it. This is another psychology thing. It helps the employers visualize you actually doing this. So instead of saying duties included administering subjects questionnaires, now you're talking about what you did. You administered questionnaires, you collected data and you encoded test results. So it's stronger and helps them say, wow, Erin did this great work. I wanna hire that person because they know exactly what they're doing, right? So you, the first thing the employers see should be what you did. And this is an example of those action verbs. I still use this when I review resumes with students and one-on-one -on -one appointments. Um, it is in that red book, like I said, in that, in that link. It goes on for three pages. So instead of saying assisted students every time, find another word for helping skills. 
instead of performed lab, find another work. There's a lead, it's all divided by section, communication, leadership, helping, managing, science skills. So this can be really helpful to do that. Um, another, and again, feel free to put any questions um, in the chat. I know I talk very quickly and I can talk all day too. So um, another thing here, the, another example, if, if you worked as a summer camp counselor, um, instead of saying you were responsible for the kids and duties included keeping them safe, talk about what you did. So say what you did and say why you did it. So you, you know, you were responsible for the kids, but you created horseback riding activities for them. Um, anytime you can quantify it, it helps make it easier for an employer. So supported a group of 12 children with behavioral needs to promote a safe environment. Think about this as the skills that you did, not just what you did, right? So in my head, and I'm going to have this on a slide later, when I work with students, I say, okay, 30% of it needs to be what you did, like helped kids. And the other 70% should be why you did it, the value you added, or the skills that you had. So, you know, collaborating with a camp director to coordinate weekly goals, this just could be, if you think about it, I mean, it's really just talking to your boss, right? But it really is collaboration. It's talking to your boss to figure out how you can put those goals. How can you make this a better experience for your students? So a lot of it is just kind of wordsmithing, but it's really, this is your time to talk about the important work that you did and don't minimize what you did. Really talk about the skills that you showed. So here's another example of how you can make that stronger if you worked as a TA in physics. Okay, that's great. That's an important job to have. It shows leadership, it shows tutoring skills. It shows responsibility. This is even better. You demonstrated your, no your knowledge of foundational physics. You held office hours, monitored lab activities, followed confidentiality regulations, all really important things. But now, if you think of that 30-70 rule, right? 30% of what you did and why, you can make it even stronger. So not just held weekly office hours, but held weekly office hours, why? To tutor students and provide a review session that shows teaching skills and it shows re reliability. So monitoring lab activities is very important. How many did you do? 40 students, that's a lot more, right? So anytime you can quantify that, show numbers, show the time that you worked. Um, I do a presentation sometimes for the athletics department and I tell you know, our student athletes, if you are in practice 25 hours a week, employers need to know that. Those are time management skills, that's balance. So think of that as well. If you are working a part-time job on top of school, 25 to 30 hours a week, that should be on your resume too. Quantify what you're doing to show those time management skills and ability to balance, okay? So, but what if you don't have a TA position? What if you didn't have a research last summer? What if you couldn't get an internship? That's when it's really important to showcase your skills. Right, so I mentioned, I showed earlier you're talking about that relevant coursework. Think of four to six important classes. If you are a first or second year student and you don't have those yet, that's okay. Put intro chem, put intro bio, put you know your introductory courses. Again, it still shows that foundational knowledge. And every semester as you take more classes, add those advanced courses on there. That will help you demonstrate that you have learned the knowledge and you're ready to apply that. Another great thing to do as science students, especially if you are trying to get into research or labs, is to show your lab classes. You don't know, students don't often realize that you can actually put your time as a lab student under your experience, because this is a great way to show employers that you have learned the information, again, but you haven't had the chance to apply it. So if you took intro bio, you probably learned how to do micro pipetters, slides, microscopes. Um, and you, if you did a group work, look at the fourth bullet, collaborated with a group of three other students to complete experience, experiments. That's just group work, but that's key. Employers want someone who can work well with others, who understands teamwork, who understands the ability of balancing responsibilities. If you wrote lab reports, applied the knowledge from classroom and lab setting to write reports. These are all things you all can do, right? So highlight those and show employers that you've learned these skills. Now, I do know I have had a couple of questions about in-person labs not happening, especially last fall. So if you weren't in person for organic, how can you put that in there? Definitely indicate that you have observed simulated lab or you have simulated labs or have you observed those if you need to. We can talk off, offline too, if you wanna talk about how to specifically put that for your own case. But you could even say applied knowledge from remote classes to 
or from remote labs to lab reports. So you want to indicate again, you always want to be honest, but I do know that our faculty um, has worked really hard that even the simulated labs are hopefully, they've worked really hard to make them still valuable. So you definitely want to put those skills that you have on there too. Um, and then that second one is for like, if you took molecular and cellular biology, All right? Here is a sample of a first year resume who may not have as much experience. If you're on the exploratory track, indicate that. You can put what your intended major is if you don't know. If you do know, if you don't know, that's okay too. Um, relevant courses, you can see this person only has two courses and that's fine, that's what you've learned. Um, high school on here, as I mentioned, high school can go on until junior year. There are always exceptions. If you went to an international baccalaureate school, if you went to a school you really want to network with, international, something like that, always exceptions. I've had students who are graduating seniors that still want their high school on there. Totally fine. This is your resume no matter what. So I can give you guidelines, but you have to be comfortable and confident in your own resume as it goes. High school diploma, you can see there. Work experience, here was the camp counseling. Activ if you are in a club, you can put that club in there. That shows your ability to balance activities. It shows getting involved in your community. Um, this one, the student happens to have their high school in there because again, we know many of you did not get activities this year. There are UMass clubs I encourage you to get involved in if you haven't that are have gone remote, but I also know some of the clubs are on pause too until they're in person. So do what you can do. Um, Computer skills should always be on your resume. And if you speak a foreign language, that should be on there too. Make sure, as I mentioned earlier in my example, basic conversational fluent, just be honest with whatever you have. If you're a native speaker, put that on there too for a foreign language. Um, also a question I forgot to mention, if you transferred from a community college, that is totally your call, whether you indicate that on there or not. Um, many students want their community college on there if they have, are either talking about the courses they took, they were involved there in organizations, they may use a reference from their, one of their community college faculty. Other students don't want it on there and that's fine too. So whatever you prefer is absolutely fine. If you studied abroad, I definitely encourage you to put your study abroad under education because employers love that you have gone out of your comfort zone, looking at other cultures, exploring other places to go. It shows you really took the initiative to go somewhere. So that is a sample first year resume. Do not be afraid to use your high school experience um, or again, and your lab classes too. Those are always great to put on there once you have those. So I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna actually go back to the second, that we really encourage you to not use the fancy online templates. Use a very simple Word document, Google Doc, um, just keep it simple all black text, um, you can use bolding or italics, but we don't encourage you switching back and forth all the time. Again, it's every time they have to switch from bolding to italics to everything, it takes a quarter of a second off. So keep in mind, keep it simple and basic. Here, one of the bigger reasons for that is the applicant tracking systems. And these are resume scanners that are often used by a lot of the big corporations, big labs, big hospitals. Um, many of them can go through the, can sort, filter through your resumes. They have a really hard time doing that. So what that means is if they can't read your resume, it's gonna be stuck in the second look pile. It doesn't mean you're gonna be completely discounted. It means that you probably won't be in that first batch that they look at because there's someone's gonna have to manually go through and check it. So the automated scanners filter resumes to basically highlight certain resumes for employers. So you wanna put those industry buzzwords. That's why it's great to have your lab skills. It's great to put your experience. It's great to put your degree, your major, your year. But these scanners cannot read graphics. They don't read colors very well. Colored ink sometimes is hard for them. The text boxes, the images, and columns are a big problem with them. They cannot, they usually cannot figure out columns because it scans left to right which means if you look at the sample resume from Meryl Carlson, what that resume is gonna read is contact profile, phone number, and then da, 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 da. It's gonna read left to right and completely mess up everything on that resume. So get rid of the columns, just cut it, just cut everything and paste it into a clear document. It will also give you more space to make longer bullets because ideally all of your bullets should only be one um, in many cases, there are some exceptions. Your bullet should be one line, should not go over to the second line if possible, because again, they read left to right, so it's better for them to see fresh things every line. Okay. So here is another sample resume. 
um, that animal science one again, just to show you here the relevant courses. So this one, I do want to point out this relevant courses section here is a table. You can see they have three columns, but that's okay because if they read left to right, there are no lines. The lines it sometimes catches on too, but you could they read left to right, it still says animal man animal management, camelid management, cell molecular biology, et cetera. So that one, it's fine because it's, re it, it's clear if it's reading left to right what it is. Um, but just make sure you have that in there. It's just when you can see they do have their community college on here. This can also be helpful if there's a gap in your education. If you went to community college and took a couple of years off to work, it can show you did work. Um, you, it kind of put, puts the pieces together for the employer there. Um, really quickly, the results or the differences between a resume and a CV. Most of the time, if an employer is asking an undergrad for a CV, they generally want a resume. They're just using the terms interchangeably. If you have a question with it, shoot me an email and I, with the job description and the title of the company, and I can let you know if I think you really need a real quote unquote CV. But most of the time, if they say send us a CV, they just mean your resume. So some exceptions for that are research. If you have extensive research position and you're applying for a really heavy, like a wet lab research position, you may, they may want your CV, which is going to be longer and have everything in it. There, um, which means every poster presentation, every individual project, group project, if you have a potential publication, every single thing you did is gonna go on your CV. That one page rule is out the window. Put everything you've done and it can be really long. Um, your resume is going to be more targeted. It focuses on what you all want for that industry or that, you know, that role and your strong qualifications. And it's more of a summary, whereas again, the CV is everything. On that website, on our, the career, our career development website, there is a link to the NIH CV guide, which NIH is the Nas National Institute of Health, and they're kind of the, the gold standard for the CV guide. And that is on, linked on our website as well. So I know I went really quickly through all this. Any questions on the resumes before I flip to a couple of things? Okay, I'm gonna ask for some involvement now. So just a couple of things. This is a sample resume. Um, I shouldn't have called it sample bad resume. That's not a very nice term to use. Um, but I would like, does anyone, can anyone give me an example of something here that they think could be done differently? You can either unmute yourself or just throw it in the chat. Uh, should the name not be uh, a large, different colored font? Thank you, Ryan. Yes. So your name, I sometimes see resume. This is not even as big. I have seen names that are like 50 font, like it takes up a third of the page. And that is a huge waste of the space. Your name should still be, let's put the name in black ink. Everything should be in black ink if possible. It, you don't want it gray. You don't want it blue. It, it looks nice sometimes. Um, but if you were handing out in person, I would say that's one thing, but we're not handing anything out in person right now. And your name should really only be like two to four font sizes, whoops, bigger than everything else. So that is a great one. Also, one thing I didn't mention earlier, you do not put your name or your contact information in the actual header of the document up here. You want it to be in the actual document. Sometimes I have students who want to do that to save space in the, in the resume, but the problem is occasionally when you send it out, if, if a recruiter has their settings a certain way in the Word document, they will not see the header. Also, those applicant tracking systems cannot read headers and footers. So you will lose your contact information. They won't even know who you are. So that was good. That was a good one. Anyone else want to add one? For the uh, job descriptions, they're not starting with the verbs. Excellent. Yes, exactly. Take that any take any pronouns, I, she, they. Um, like if you're working, you know, working with someone else, um, go straight to the verb. So demonstrated responsibility, provided out of class help, followed confidentiality. You always want to start exactly with the action verb. Thank you. Great one. All right. There's one in the chat. Education is not on top. Exactly. As a current student, you want your education up on top. This is what employers are looking for. And this is what makes you a valued employee right now because your work, your your coursework at UMass in College of Natural Sciences, um, yay us, is what is going to make you a valuable candidate for a job or internship. Excellent. Okay, so we'll move on there. I just wanted to show that there's a few other things in here. Um, you know, that's not consistent as far as the bolding. So these, are, I'm sorry, these have bullets. This is a paragraph form here. 
Also, and these are little things that no one besides a career counselor is going to notice, um, but you can see this one has the dates on the right and the location up on the left. This one has the date on the left and location on the right. We are really big on consistency. Those are the types of things that I have people come in and probably think I'm a little nitpicky, but that is my job, right? So I want this to be consistent. You want, if it comes down to you and another candidate and the employer is looking at two resumes and wants to know who they're going to interview for that one last interview slot, and they say, oh, well, this person, this person's formatting is weird. It's not consistent. We'll go with this person. You don't want that to be the reason they choose someone else, right? Okay. Um, all right, let me go back to my presentation. Just a couple things I want to point out to as you're going through. We are in the midst of career fair season. Um, this is really important because some, as you can see here, we don't have a life sciences fair in the spring. We had Career Blast yesterday, which had a lot of employers, but there are a lot of employers coming to different career fairs that you may not think about. The engineering and CICS career fair is today. Actually, I think it's just engineering. I think they took CICS off of the title. We have two uh, that I know of, there may be more, two employers coming today that have group sessions open this afternoon that are looking for science students. The Mass Life Sciences Center, which has an incredible internship program, has a group session at two o'clock today. You just you can register at Career Fair Plus. You, it's, you can still do one-on-one -on -one appointments, I think, too. But this is a great opportunity to just sit and listen to hear what they're offering for their internships. The Mass Life Sciences Center internships, if you haven't heard of it, you apply to one database, like a data, basically like a, a data bank almost. And life sciences companies from throughout Massachusetts will then go into that set of resumes and choose students to interview and hire. It is a fantastic opportunity and UMass sends a lot of students there every year. So this is a great opportunity. And again, they are going to the engineering fair. They are at the engineering fair today, careerfairplus.com if that interests you, but take advantage of this. Another company that's at the engineering, again, it's the engineering fair, but they're searching for chem and bio students. Bristol Myers Squibbs loves our students. They hire students every year. And they have, they're in, out in Devons, which is out near Boston. I think it's like between Fitchburg and Boston. Um, and they are hiring students. And they also have an info session this afternoon. So if you go to Career Fair Plus, log in with your UMass email address, because it is limited to uh, UMass students. Um, you can sign up for a one-on-one -on -one session or a group session. So really important to keep in mind um, to kind of think, think, uh, Think broadly. I think that was my term, think broadly. Um, I'm going back to this because obviously our BCT career fair is for our building and construction technology students this fall, or sorry, this year, this week. Next week, we have sustainability career fair. We also have the nonprofit government social impact school of public health and psychology career fairs. And both the nonprofit and SPHHS career fairs have organizations coming that regularly hire our psychology students. So don't overlook that. If you don't want to wait till April for the psychology career fair, go to the nonprofit fair next week. I think there's at least eight that I can think of that hire our psychology students too. So that's a great way to get in and get to know employers. So um, I'm gonna go through this quickly here. And then, uh, just to kind of wrap it up, I will be here for questions, so I'm not ending this soon. We have one more how to ace a virtual career fair session next week. We will probably add more later in the semester to accommodate the psychology career fair, but right now these are the only ones we have on the schedule. We have also just added this link to our main website too, so if you cannot attend, I'm going to show you in a minute where that is. And Chris, thank you for reminding me that I needed to have these posted because that is posted now. Um, and also, if you are looking for resume and cover letter help, just to remind you, our uh, career peer advisors have drop-in hours from one to five. So let me show you really quickly too, and you can share this info with your friends and classmates. Um, this is the Career Fair Plus. If you, if you are interested in, in looking at the career fairs that we have coming, I'm gonna throw that in the chat so you can log in. You can do it on an app on your phone or um, on the desktop. But also on our website, we have added, we are slowly going to be adding our workshops. And if you scroll down on our workshop here, we have added three workshops, a resume workshop, a cover letter workshop, and a virtual career prep workshop. Those are links to the cloud recordings. Um, we will be adding more too. I just added those yesterday. Those are right on our website here. And then also down on the Career Fair Plus, I added the workshop right there. So we are working on our website. We know it's a little busy. 
pretty messy actually, but we are working on improving that and we are trying to get those workshops up. So I definitely take advantage of that. Um, let me see, just, okay. Other thing we have, Regeneron is coming. Um, always, always look in Handshake. We have lots and lots of info sessions coming up, which is a great way for you to hand off your newly revised resumes. Um, they are doing an info session March 4th at noon. This is a great chance to just hear what they're hiring. They are in Rensselaer, New York, but they are an excellent, excellent organization and really big in their industry. And that, um, any other questions here too, you can sign up um, on Handshake for events, the advising, download your career guide and drop in resume help. You are also always welcome to email me if you just have quick questions. I'm gonna throw my email address in the chat. Hold on, I just did something. All right, there we go. Any questions that I did not answer? I know I went really quickly through resumes and threw a lot of information at you. Any questions I can answer either individually or to the group right now? Uh, yeah, I got a quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've got a minor that's kind of unrelated to my major. So would I include that in... Um... Would I all words? Would I also just include that underneath the major? Absolutely. So if you have, um, you know, a bachelor of science in biology and a minor in resource economics, absolutely put that on there. That also shows it shows multiple interests. It shows time management because you're balancing your academics with your major and your minor, and it shows also that you've learned those additional skills that most biology majors or whatever your major is have not learned. So absolutely include your minor up there. Okay. Great question. So I'm a freshman bio major, uh, and so all of my lab experience is coming from just in-person lab this spring. Is it okay to put skills in advance, like stuff we're gonna do uh, in this semester on my resume? So what I would do for that, Sophia, is put that it's a class in progress. So put that it was the spring semester, and then what I would put for now is scheduled to learn or course, um, it's a great way to how I'm gonna phrase that. Um, prepared to learn lab skills such as, et cetera, or scheduled to learn lab skills, because just in case, I mean, we obviously we, we are really hoping you are all released to in-person classes on Monday, um, but on the off chance you send a resume out Sunday saying that you have these skills and then something comes up and you don't get those skills, um, that would be a better thing to maybe put in your cover letter. We are that talking about how I'm excited for my intro bio lab this spring because I'm eager to learn you know, pipetting and microscopy, microscopy and et cetera. So just, I mean, no one, as long as you are upfront about it, and even if they call you for an interview, you could always say, just so you know, we did not get to that in my lab class. I was really hoping to learn electrophoresis, but we didn't get it. Um, but the important part, they're not, you know, they're not gonna penalize you for that, but it's just really important to be upfront about it. So okay to put it on there, but just make sure it's clear that it's in process. I'm going to stop this recording. Thank you all for coming. I am going to stay here for any questions.